With a little luck today, I think we're making the sexiest dish yet. I even bought a plate for this one. Welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. My name is Mitch May. We're cooking through Anthony Bourdain's cookbook to honor the man, the myth, the legend, and to also improve my culinary skills. Today, we are making the classic restaurant thing, Coquille Saint-Jacques with champagne, scallops. We're going to sear these and hopefully not overcook them. And I'm gonna chef this up with a little bit of parsnip puree and chive oil. I got the stuff prepped. I got the book down below in the description. Also, I'm doing a giveaway at the time of this video. It's probably gonna end in like a week or so. I'll link it right over here. Let's get making some scallops. We have a nice boil. We're going to add our Johns in there. Gonna let that boil for about 12 to 13 minutes. While those are doing their thing, abruptly, we're going to make the sauce. In a small saucepan, melt one tablespoon of unsalted butter and add one thinly sliced shallot. Let them cook over medium low heat until soft, but not browned, about three minutes. You know, I never had fish stock. I got this from Wegmans. I'm curious what it... Oh, just kidding, it tastes like a mild kind of chicken stock. Add one cup of fish stock and bring to a boil. Medium high heat until it is reduced by half. While we're hanging out waiting for stuff to boil, this recipe does call for champagne, from which Bourdain says, take a big hit of before staggering to the table. I never opened a bottle of champagne before. First for everything. You may be cringing in your seat, I don't know, but hopefully nothing explodes too dramatically here. Twist this and then we just Pop it off like this, right? Uh, we just pop it off like this, I'm assuming. Yeah, cool. Let's clean this up. I don't know what I did wrong. If you do, SOS. Solid Jonas Brothers song, by the way. Everything's kind of reducing. I think our parsnips are, ugh, it got in my sock. Give these a penetration, see how they're doing. Should be easily going in there. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Bop these into our blender. Heavy cream. Nice glob of butter. And I'm gonna add about two to three sprigs of this herb, which I'm totally blanking on. Hit it with a little salt, maybe a little more salt. Get the lid on. Need a little more love getting in there. Ain't no way those parsnips were cooked long enough. Plan B, we're gonna put them back in the pot and cook them further with the milk. Hopefully I don't curdle it. Add a little more milk, although this is skim milk, so we'll see. And just try to bring that up to like a simmer so we can cook these down. Add the half a cup of cream. Bring the mixture to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and cook for 15 minutes. Parsnip puree is looking kind of weird. I'm gonna strain out the parsnips and blend them up with some of this mixture. Let's see what texture we're looking at. Ooh, I don't know how we did it there, but it's got a decent texture. That is special. It, it's, you know, there's a ton of cream, milk, butter, but um, I'm pleased with that actually. Hit it with just a little more salt, like a lot of more actually, because it needs salt big time. And I imagine that's gonna look nice if we dollop that in the middle, plate the little scallops on there, It'd be pretty. Get this off to the side. The sauce has been reduced. It smells like a phenomenal clam chowder. I really don't see why you don't just blend these all together and just make a thicker, more flavorful sauce instead of just like extruding these onions, the flavor, but it's kind of like in the name of purity and uh, textures, so I get it. And we'll keep this warm. Time for the fun part, the scallops. Here we are. Now, Bourdain mentions, to be certain, these are dry scallops, as in they aren't full of saline solution and soaking in some liquid. The fish person will know what you're talking about. I gave him a little pat down. Gonna give him a further one, because we're gonna go for a sear on these. And again, water hates sears. Not the, you know, shopping center. Like, the browning of the meat. We're gonna season these up with salt and pepper, and we're going to add them to a hot freaking pan, which brings us into our comment of the week because I'm going to use ba doop ba beep bow boom clarified butter, aka ghee. The only difference between clarified butter and ghee is that ghee is a little more flavorful. My homie Kevin Feely helped me out big time with a paragraph of information that is useful. And the reason I keep burning certain things on my pan is because there's milk solids in butter. Those milk solids brown. Ghee 
does not have those milk solids. Kevin, thank you for the comment, man. And I could use some further help. If anyone knows a solid food processor, that would be ideal. I have to do a bunch of recipes to call for a food processor. If you got recommendations for one, please comment down below. Food processor brand, I'm going to have to get one very soon. Hit these with some salt and pep. I'm realizing these things should be tempered a little bit. In the meantime, let me show you how I made a little fancy chive oil, yeah? So I found it pretty neat. Bourdain has a recipe for basil oil and parsley oil. I figure we follow his recipe, but sub out chives. Pretty simple, we start with three to four bunches of chives, put them in boiling water for like five seconds, and then we blanch to retain that nice vibrant color. I probably blanched them a little too long, but I popped them in the blender, and Bourdain doesn't really specify, he just says fill the blender with oil till it covers the herbs. I went with avocado oil and gave this a nice pulsing. I did not get too far. The chives did not really blend up. They kind of remained like grass in the blender, but I did my best and I blended for all of like three to four minutes. I then strained this mixture through cheesecloth as to not get any little green bits into the oil. It came out okay. The flavor wasn't extremely chive-like. It was very, very mild. And the oil itself came out a little more Grinch-like than I would have preferred, but it's green and it is chive oil. Okay, we're back. Pan is nice and freaking piping hot. Let's get these scallops on. Cook on one side for about three minutes. Sort of like, you know, a clock. That burns quite all right. This is gonna burn as well. Then turn them with tongs or fish spatula to cook the other side. Eh, it's okay. And from here, the camera overheated, so that sucks. I finished cooking the scallops on the other side, removed the excess fat, and returned the pan to the heat. Stir in the champagne, scraping with a wooden spoon to incorporate the brown stuff. Reduce the champagne over medium-high heat until it is thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. Something I'm gonna do actually is strain this sauce. And as you can see, there's some bits we're saving there. Bring to a boil and whisk in the remaining tablespoons of softened butter. Stir in the lemon juice and arrange the scallops on a serving platter and pour the sauce around. Clearly I already had a bite, F***ing exquisite. They're cooked perfectly. You know, the chive oil. I'm not going to eat anymore because I want to savor this off camera. The scallops and the sauce, the part Bourdain instructed me, knockout, maybe a little too lemony for some people. And you know, the chive oil, I don't know if that's doing shit, but it looks pretty. Parsnip puree, it's like just on the brink of savory and sweet, right on the fence. And that freaking black plate, I knew that would look good. I knew, I was at Crate and Barrel and I saw that plate and, and it, well, actually my sister showed me that plate. If you're into these videos, think about subscribing. I'm doing a giveaway right now. So, Sharpie, here it is. This was Back to Bourdain. Stay organized, clean up after yourself. You do the best you can.